So what we've got coming up next is something that's pretty interesting because we talk about honing and we're going to come talk about your project Pontiac in a little bit. Darren loved these, oh, by these the way. Are awesome. oh, these are fantastic. Yeah. What's neat about those, so these are all these surface finishes on freshly honed blocks. But what does that surface finish do? How does it look? How much does it change once the engine has run? And we're going to show you that right now. longevity of your engine. But how much does it change? How precise do we need to be? How much do we need to worry about things like RPK, those peaks that are left from the honing process? Well, we're going to find out. We have this brand new block right here that's just been honed. It's one of my dad's old Ford C3 NASCAR blocks. And we're going to be doing a piston ring coating test. So guess what? It's the perfect opportunity to measure it before we put it together. And then once we have the short block together, but before we put on the cylinder heads, we're going to measure the surface finish again to see how much it changed. And then once we complete that first set of coating testings, our baseline coating test, we're going to take the engine apart and we're going to measure it again after initial break-in. So we're going to be able to show you as owned, after assembly, and then after break-in. So stay tuned, this is gonna be fun. So this is the block that Greg Anderson honed. We'll actually leave a link to that video in the description box below. So if you wanna check out the honing process, you can go see that. So what this process delivered, we can actually measure it with the profilometer, this really cool tool that drops right in here. If you don't know what a profilometer is, there's a little diamond tip stylus that actually drags across the surface of the cylinder bore. <laughs> Some people even call it like a digital fingernail. It's a pretty great device. It can measure to a millionth of an inch. And it's gonna give us this trace that's gonna show us exactly what that cylinder finish looks like. And the great part is it can see that you have all the valleys down there to hold the oil. And then it's got those little bit of peaks on top. Those peaks are what we're kind of going to be studying here. How much do those peaks change from the hone to assembly and then post break-in? What we don't want to see is those valleys change that much or the core roughness because that's what's going to be holding the load. We want to see this nice plateaued finish we have here. Now, in terms of the numbers, the RPK, that's the peak height. The RK, that's the core roughness. The RVK, that's the valley depth that holds the oil. So on our RPK, we're right at 10 micro inches right now. We're at 39 micro inches on the RK, and then our RVK is 69 micro inches, which we kind of like this idea of this finish, a little bit deeper valley to hold more oil. That way it seals better, especially when you put more fuel to the engine, that's really important because the fuel is trying to wash away the oil and that oil is the gasket and the lubricant between the piston ring and the cylinder wall. So good longevity, good seal. You need to have enough oil at the right place, the right time and the right amount. And that's what this engineered surface finish is all about. So let's go ahead and put in the crank and the rods, turn this thing over. It's gonna be kind of curious to see how much those numbers change if any at all, just from putting the engine together. Okay, so we have the short block together. Once you put it together, you can't really measure it. So we're gonna simulate running the valves. We're gonna turn the engine over several times. Then we're gonna measure it again. So let's see what happens. Up and down she goes, you hear her moving. And you can see it working. So I can't wait to see what this actually shows us. All right, let's measure it and see what we find out. Okay, so we've put the engine together. We've turned it over several times to simulate you know, running the valves, getting the engine assembled, because obviously you can't measure it after it's already been assembled. 
But before I decided to put the profilometer here, I decided to put the paper towel in there just to clean it off. Look at how much stuff came off. This cylinder was perfectly white glove clean before we put the piston in and before we turned it all over. This is how much has come off just that cylinder just from putting it together and turning it over a few times. So let's put the profilometer in there and see if it tells us if there's any difference in that surface finish. Again, the little cool tool, let's just drop it right in here. That same cylinder we had measured previously. Now, with that located, come over here and hit go. So now that diamond stylus is dragging across that bore and we'll be able to see if there's any change in the surface finish just from the assembly process. So what we see are the peaks beginning to round off a little bit, but you're beginning to see a little bit of change in that tray. So what we'll be really interesting to see is what the microscope says. All right, so our handy dandy USB microscope will go right in here where the profilometer is. So all we have to do is remove the profilometer, put it away. USB microscope goes right to that same spot we were just looking at. And now on the screen, we can pull it up and see what we've got. And right off the bat, you can see how much clearer the surface is. Where before there was a lot more white area where there was roughness, we're seeing that come down a little bit. And that's just the ring beginning to wear in that cylinder, knocking those peaks down a little bit. The yeah, cross hatch angle hasn't changed right at 30 degrees like it's supposed to be because it shouldn't change. All right, so the really cool thing is gonna be is to check these with the camera and the profilometer after break-in. The last time you saw this engine, we had it on the assembly stand and it checked the cylinder bore surface finish to see how much it had changed between just honing it and basically just putting it together. Well, now it's been on the dyno. It's been through a 30 minute break in. It's had 10 power runs made on it. Now it's completely back apart again, back on the engine stand, profilometers in there, and guess what? Those peaks had come down. And with the microscope, we've been able to look in the cylinder bore and we can see that that fuzz has started to go away. We saw that fuzz from the honing process. It started to go away as we put in the rings and assembled the engine. Now, just after that little bit of dyno break-in time, they're all pretty much gone. And now we have those deep valleys still. That's the key. The profilometer is letting us know we still have those deep valleys to hold the oil. We still have enough RK to support the load. That way we have plenty of oil to both lubricate and to seal. That's what we got. So now we can know you don't need to worry too much about what those peak numbers are. It's kind of like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. You don't want too much, you don't want too little, you want it just right. But the nice thing is you have a pretty wide margin of error there with those peaks. They could be as low as seven, they could be as high as 14 or maybe even 21 like on this engine and realize they're gonna come right down, come right in just through the assembly and the initial break-in. The key is you wanna make sure you have the right amount of RK and RVK. That way you've got proper lubrication and ring seal. What a day, what a day, what a day. But yeah, my brain, my brain is swollen. I've learned so much today. They told us, don't start cars. We are not gonna listen.